the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston, as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Whitey Malone's feet sank in the soft, yielding snow with every step he took. Wanted for murder and a score of other crimes, the fugitive had set a heartbreaking pace for himself through the famine-stricken wilderness. Long days on the trail had sapped his strength. His shoulders ached with exhaustion, and an expression of weariness crossed his face as he raised his arm as if to brush the swirling snow from before his eyes. God. I keep going. Fear drove Malone beyond the point where he thought his endurance would snap. For somewhere in the blinding swirl of white snow enveloping the forest, a mountie trailed him. In spite of himself, Malone's steps began to lag. His stride became shorter. Sacrificing precious seconds, he stood still for a moment. Tense, listening. He heard nothing. The snow fell silently, obscuring sound as well as vision. But he's back there. Somewhere. If I could just rest. If I could. If I stop, he'll close in. How much of a lead do I have? How far behind is he? He's close, I know it. Two of us, the only moving things in this forsaken snow. <laughs> Gotta keep going. Gotta put distance between us. Shaking his head impatiently, Malone concentrated every effort on maintaining what he knew was a scant lead. What's more of this? They'll be trailing a dead man. Can't, can't keep on without any rest. He ought to be as near done in as I am. Must have slowed him down, too. Oh, if I could only believe that. For half an hour, the fugitive went on, breaking trail through the leagues of the forest, his pace varying, slackening, and then as he realized it, quickening. Uppermost in his thoughts was the ever-present consciousness of the man behind him. He knew his pursuer must be reading the signs of his exhaustion in the tracks he left in the snow. that close? I... That tree over there. Yeah. I'll be able to get him from here. Now, Preston. Preston. Preston, I'm waiting for you. Come on and get me. Hit the tree. My luck. Can't make him out through the snow. He's coming in. Following my tracks. That was just a warning, Preston. You better stop it. Then the next one will stop you. The fugitive peered from behind the protection of a giant alder tree. His own track showed for a short distance before his eyes. And they were lost in the nothingness of falling snow. His breath sounded like thunder in his ears and he strained his eyes, waiting for the Mahdi to emerge from the curtain of snow. Each step he heard approaching pulled his nerves tighter, but he waited. His fear, his exhaustion forgotten in the intensity of concentration. There was cold-blooded murder in his eyes. He was waiting only until the sound of the approaching Mahdi took shape. You're signing your own death warrant with every step you take, Mahdi. Turn back now and it won't fire. Hey, what the... A dog! I'll show you... Get away from me, you mutt! Let go of my arm! Let go, I tell you! Let go of me! Oh, I can't! Get down, you bastard! Raise that rifle, Malone. This four-footed devil caught him all! Let go of my arm! Good work, King, old boy. Down, fella.
that rifle. I said drop it. If it hadn't been for that dog, you'd be laying out there in the snow with a bullet in your heart. You're not putting any more bullets in anyone's heart, Malone. Much good it'll do you to take me in. You're going to pay for the crimes you've committed, and it won't be long till we catch up with the rest of your gang. <laughs> I thought you was too smart to do any pipe dreaming, Preston. These handcuffs are no dream. Well, you got me all right. But you don't have them. And you won't either. No? No. They can't afford to, to let me rot in any jail, see? We'll see. With his prisoners, Sergeant Preston retraced his steps through the wilderness. The great dog came running ahead, breaking the trail for the two men. It was a long journey, but after several days traveling, the Mountie reached his destination, the jail in Mercer City. Go ahead, Malone. Well, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Constable. Yeah, I never thought you'd get him. There's a cell waiting for you, Malone. Lead the way, Constable. Where do you take the handcuffs off me, Monty? When you're behind bars. All right, come on, you. Well, here, put you right in here, Malone. Not that you'll be using it long. Yeah, that's just your opinion, Mr. Lawman. Here, Monty, take them off. Malone, you can help the law. Yeah, just save your breath. You might even be able to save your neck. A miner's jury might be inclined to be more lenient. I ain't worried you. about my neck. I'll let a few people outside do the worrying for me. Yeah, I guess he won't listen to reason, Sergeant. Yeah, I've got my own reasons. They make more sense to me than all this law talk. Now, look, kid, the sergeant might be right. He was to tell a miner's jury that you have the law. I'll never even face that jury. As long as I'm here and a few people know I'm here, I'll never hang. Well, suit yourself. That's just what I'm doing, Monty. The rest of the gang know I ain't planning to hang alone. And that's why that rope will never get within a yard of my neck. Come on, Constable. We'll leave him alone. Sure, Sergeant. You better get set to lose a strike or two, Monty. An escaping prisoner ain't gonna look so good on your record. He seems to be very confident. Ah, they're all that way, Sergeant. They turn yellow as soon as they see the gallows going up in the yard. You know, I think he believes every word he says. He hasn't got a chance of getting out of here. If the rest of the gang know Malone's been captured, that means only one thing. Yeah. What's that? They're here in town. Well, maybe you're right. But <laughs> there's a lot of people in this town. How are you going to find out who you're looking for unless he talks? Oh, hi, Pete. Good day to you, Constable. Here's snow. Just keeps coming down. Well, how are you, Sergeant? Fine, please, and you? I can't complain, huh? Lamps are on the desk. Yeah, I see them. Hmm. Need a cleaning pretty bad, too, looks like. <laughs> yeah, if it wasn't for Pete, I guess we wouldn't have much light around here, Sergeant. Comes in every three, four weeks, clean out the lamps, put in new wicks. I see. <laughs> As the two men sat in the office watching Pete Conroy clean the lamps, Sergeant Preston was thoughtful and silent. After the task was finished, Pete left, closing the door behind him. And the Mountie walked over to the table, picking up one of the lamps. Well, what's eating you, Sergeant? You've been mighty quiet. Ain't you satisfied with the job Pete done in the lamps? They look all right to me. Oh, Pete did a good job. I was just thinking. What? Do you have any dynamite in the office, Constable? Dynamite? I don't know. I got a little of everything in this desk of mine, but I don't think I have any dynamite. Why? Now, if we were to put dynamite in one of these lamps instead of the oil, use the fuse in place of the wick, and then when the lamps are set out tonight, put that one in Malone's cell. Yeah, but why? When we'd attempt to light it in Malone's cell, if you were to tell him that you had a new man cleaning the lamps... Well, I don't see how dynamite... The dynamite there. won't explode. It needs a cat to set it off. Sure. When we discover the dynamite in the lamp, Malone will see us. Yeah, He'll think somebody's trying to kill him before he squeals. Ah, so that's it. Then he'd think it was only the would-be killer's ignorance of how dynamite works that saved his life. Exactly. He'll think his gang double-crossed him. Uh, he'll sure as shoot and talk then. 
I don't have any dynamite here, but I can get some over at the general store. Good, and don't forget the fuse, Constable. We want this to look real. You bet we do, Sergeant. <laughs> you bet we do. It was late afternoon, shortly before the early Yukon darkness, and in the jail in Mercer City... I think I'll go out and take a look around town before it gets dark. Go right ahead, Sergeant. I'll stay here. You know, if I was you, I'd stop by the saloon. Liquor loosens a man's tongue. You might hear some talk about Malone. I think Malone will do his own talking. Come on, King, old boy. <laughs> See you shortly, Constable. Right. Constable Blanchard walked to the window and watched the Mountie disappear from view. Then, going to the table, he picked up one of the lamps and hurried to the desk. Dynamite. <laughs> Blanchard worked quickly, pouring the dynamite from the lamp. Then, nervously, he refilled the lamp base with a powdered mixture and was fitting the parts together when... Hey, what the... Oh, well, you weren't gone long, Sergeant. Everything's quiet, and I think it will be for several hours. Apparently, you weren't expecting me so soon. What do you mean? This is what I mean, Blanchard. When I left, this lamp was fixed, and there was no need to meddle with it. I was just making sure that it was this fixed. This is dynamite. It's... Keep your hand away from that desk drawer. I, I'm just going to close it. You were going to reach for that forty-four. Start walking to the cell block, Blanchard. King and I will be right behind you. Now, look here, Sergeant. You're making a mistake. We'll see what sort of mistake I'm making. Start walking. Now, wait a minute. Keep going. Malone. Well, looks like a visit in committee. What's on your mind, Molly? You see this lamp? Sure. What do you want to buy? This was for your cell. Yeah? Well, I'll be needing one. If a flame were put to this, you'd never need another lamp. The constable fixed this for you, Malone. Take a look at it. Hey, what is this? A game money? Examine that lamp. Sergeant, I can explain. I don't get what you're dropping. Well, this ain't oil. No, it isn't oil. Do you know what it is? Oh, it looks like it. Yeah. What's blasting for? That's right. A match touched to that fuse would blow you sky high, Malone. You never would have had a chance to talk. Why, you dirty double-crossing rats. Watch what you say, Malone. I said watch what I say. If it wasn't for the money, I'd be in kingdom come right now. So you thought you'd get me out of the way, huh? Ah, don't be a fool, Malone. You can still... I can still what? Cover up for you? And take a chance on you murdering me before I can put you where you belong? Yeah, I'll hang, all right. But you're hanging with me, Joe Blanchard. He's your man, Sergeant. The brains of the whole business. What about the rest of the guys? Well, there was only one other fella, Hank Porter. He was killed in a gunfight in Dawson three months ago. Blanchard and me are the only ones that are left. And I'd like to get my hands on your yellow neck. You can't prove a thing, Sergeant. You don't have to. I can. There's the stuff you got hidden under the floor of your cabin. All right, Blanchard. You can move into this cell right next to Malone. <laughs> yes, fella, the case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time and reach you from our transcription studios.